Hello and welcome to Games Radar. I'm James. This is Josh. How's it going? And this is an Xbox Series X. Over the last week and a bit, we've been asking for your questions via Twitter, via our YouTube videos, and we've got around 50 to answer. Josh, you've been hands on with this for about a week, nearly two now. Yeah, coming up on two weeks, I've had this thing in my house, uh, playing a lot of Batcat and well, just a lot of games, too many games really, and then, yeah, I've had a good time. So excited to answer some questions. All right, so we're going to go through the hardware, some of the features, graphics, controller, Xbox Live, what you do on day one, and a few more surprises for Josh along the way that he might not know about yet. Great. So let's get started. All right, Josh, our first section is about the hardware. And this first question is very easy to answer, hopefully. Does it have an optical port? Okay, so the Xbox Series X does not have an optical port that was removed from the Xbox One. So if you've got a sound bar or any headsets that require it, sadly, it will not work. Okay. Can you copy games from the Xbox One to the Xbox Series X via HDD or Wi-Fi? So you can copy them via HDD. Um, Wi-Fi, to my knowledge, is no. So you will need to either re-download everything manually or copy it over with a, with a hard drive. Can you move games and apps to the expandable storage card? Yes, is the answer to that. It's very painless, it's very quick, but you can basically move anything on the console, to my experience, over to the storage card and back. Um, obviously, there are benefits to either. When you say very quick, what are we talking? Uh, I would say it took about two, three minutes to move a 60 gig game over to the storage card. So, you know, it's not bad. That does, however, interrupt any downloads or updates you're currently doing on the console. So it's good that it's fast. Well, I'm glad you've answered that because the next question is how long does it take to move a game from the expandable oh. storage well, card let me, to the machine? Let me tell you, uh, very quick. <laughs> Couple very of, quick, about two minutes. About two minutes, That's yeah. That's what I've heard. Okay, and finally for the hardware, how long do disks take to install to the machine? So that is variable, obviously, depending on how big the game is, but it basically takes as long as it would on an Xbox One. So Titanfall 2, for example, took like 35 minutes to install, which I was a bit surprised by. Um, and then obviously it required a 30 gig update, which meant you know it took a little while to get going. But yeah, disks are going to take a little while to install, sadly. 30 minutes still feels like quite a long time for yeah, the next was, generation of games. It was ages. Given how fast everything else is, yeah. that was a bit like, oh, come on. I can't wait for GTA 5 to get installed. It's then. all about digital downloads now. You know, you got to get on it. It's just discs are too long. It takes too long. All right then, Josh, moving on to the controller. Is the controller the same as the Xbox One? It looks the same as the Xbox One, but Microsoft has made a number of small revisions to it. So, you know, they have basically made it a little bit smaller. They've put some nice texture grip on the back and on the triggers and just moved some, it's like millimeters of difference, but it's definitely a nicer controller. Which feeds into the next question, which is how different is it? I well, guess like in terms of the feel of the triggers and all of that, it's, it's different, but in terms of its ergonomics and its shape it's basically the same yeah kind of i mean the biggest change you'll notice is the d-pad so they've taken kind of a some lessons from the series elite pad and um you know it's got this dish which sort of has a nice well in it which makes it easy to rest your thumb and it's it's really nice um but yeah i mean fundamentally it's the same it works on xbox one works on pc but it is much nicer, it's much more comfortable to hold and, and to play with. So yeah, it's a, it's a really nice pad. Okay, our next question is about range, and I'm assuming this is Bluetooth range. Is is it better than the Xbox One controller? From what I've been- How far have you been in your house away from this? I've been about as well, my flat's very small. So um, it's about, from what I can tell, the range is the similar, if not the same as the Xbox One pad. So, you know, you can't, walk downstairs while in a party chat to answer the door to get post but you could probably drag it to the bathroom if you really wanted to there you go you can take your controller of the xbox series x into the bathroom if you want to Look, sometimes you can't disrupt a party chat everyone knows that well and this next question is related how long do the batteries last in the controller yeah so the batteries uh i 
I haven't got a play and charge kit to hand, so I couldn't tell you that, but double A batteries, um, I would say from what I've experienced, are a little bit longer than the Xbox One controller, which was around 30 to 40 hours, depending on what you're doing with it. Obviously, if you plug, it's got a jack on the, on the underside for headsets. If you plug anything into it, that will drain the batteries a little bit faster, but you know, I've got 30, 40 hours playtime with some AA batteries and then required a switch out, so it's not too bad. That's right. It's 2020 and controllers still use AA batteries. Listen, it's all about, it's all about choice. <laughs> and if your choice is using AA batteries, then you've made some terrible life decisions. Well. And finally, for the controller, does the controller have input lag? That seems like a weird question. Uh, not that I've noticed. The Xbox One, the original Xbox One pad, I think had some problems back in 2013 at launch, but Microsoft's done a lot of work to reduce it where possible. They've actually introduced a bunch of new tech that there's no need for us to get into because it's very complicated that reduces input lag to two milliseconds. So, you know, it's really fast, it's really responsive, which is great for games like, you know, Gears 5 and Forza Horizon and, and just anything. It's, it's, yeah, it's a fast pad, it's a nice pad. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Okay, we'll roll straight into the features questions. And question one is a controversial one. What is the point of Quick Resume? Okay, so Quick Resume is a feature that honestly I didn't think I would care about, but it has kind of really, it fits into the way that I play games. So Quick Resume basically lets you suspend software while you're using it, jump between other games and apps, and then jump straight back into them. So for me as somebody that likes to play a round of Warzone, get killed, get angry, jump to Netflix, watch five minutes of a show, get bored, switch to another game, get bored of that, go back to Warzone. This basically lets me just leap effortlessly between the apps that I have open with basically zero downtime. We're talking like five, 10 seconds of loading to get you back into the game exactly where you left off. So, you know, going back to an Xbox One now just feels like, you know, pulling teeth, it's so slow, but this is just, it's really nice, especially if you're just having a, you know, lazy gaming day where you, you're just jumping between loads of stuff. It's great. Cool. For the record, that is not how you play games. That is 100%. You, you play a game until you finish it, and then you play the next one. Oh, JJ. Um, okay, so does the quick resume feature work with multiplayer games? Okay, so multiplayer games, it depends. Like, So if you look at something like Sea of Thieves, that was a game that basically boots you out of the lobby anyway for if you're inactive after like 20 minutes, it will boot you out. So if you jump from Sea of Thieves to Ori and the Will of the Wisps, you'll go back into Sea of Thieves and it'll load you straight back into the base menu. Um, but it, you know, it makes sense. It, it's not plausible that you jump out of a multiplayer game into something else and then expect to come back and not be dead, underwater, in jail, like anything, like who knows? Like, so not really, but at least you can get back into the menus relatively quickly. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. For anything like, like you mentioned, Warzone, Fortnite, so anything the way you're going to have to be in an active lobby is going to kick you back to the menu. Yeah. I mean, the benefit of something like a war zone is that it basically negates the, let's say, 50 second load it would take to go from the dashboard into the, the main menu screen on a traditional Xbox One. That's gone. It's just, you know, 10 seconds, you're back in the lobby. So, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's, it just reduces friction, basically. Okay. Uh, next up is how does it work? Quick resume. This is we're still on quick resume okay. uh, with switching between two disc based games. Okay. So obviously it's not as seamless as you'd hope it would be because you have to physically get up and adjust. Got to allow for the time of yourself yes. going to the machine. And obviously given what we were saying earlier with the, you know, you need the disc installed to begin with because that's going to take some time. But if the discs are installed, it will work fine it you know you put the disc in in theory well from what i've been able to test it just boots back up um you know there are only a, there's a limit on the amount of games you can have active in quick resume at any one time so as long as you're switching between those two disc based games you know in tandem it, it should work absolutely fine and just bring you straight back to where you were before have you experienced what that limit is how many things can you have running at once? That's yeah. not, I've made that up. That's one of my questions. Oh, questions. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, yes, you can. Um, yes, I have experienced it, but it's completely dependent on the software. So basically it's stored, basically the, like the ghost of the data is stored in the SSD. So I've experienced six or seven games at a maximum, but they were like indie games. As soon as you start throwing stuff like 
Yakuza Zero, Control, like bigger, more hardware intensive games, then it really reduces it back to like four or five. But, you know, Microsoft actually built Quick Resume because their data showed that the average amount of games that a player plays at any one time is four. So it's built around that and then anything else is a bonus. And if you reach the limit, it just kind of, it won't pop up with the Quick Resume logo and you'll just have to load it from the menu as, as normal. Okay, uh, related, uh, can you cancel games out of Quick Resume? Yes, so... Like if you get really annoyed with it. If you yeah, get, I'm going to wait 10 seconds for this when I load it up again. Yeah, if you get really annoyed with it, uh, you can cancel it out. It's basically if you boot out of a game back to the dashboard, you can click the menu button, quick cli- uh, qu- click quit, and then that will quit it out of Quick Resume. However, and this was something I was a little, not frustrated by, but it, it would be a nice feature for the future, is you can't actually see, there's no list of like, these games are active in Quick Resume, which, you know, all things considered, isn't really a big deal, but it would be nice to see, oh, you know, Control is still active in Quick mm-hmm. Resume. Okay, I'll go back in and play another 20 minutes of Control. Sadly, you can't do that. So if you are playing like, 10 games at once like i do sometimes it might it might be a bit of roulette but then you shouldn't don't have 10 games on the go at once it's very bad for you are the performance options for gaming on xbox series x performance like the were i guess for the xbox one x where you could choose between 60 frames a second or 4k okay so there are no there are no specific let's say we talk about backwards compatibility games i guess specifically for this um there are no specific performance settings for those titles unless the developer has specifically built them so if you look at something like final fantasy 15 rise of the tomb raider quantum break those sorts of games that received 4k updates for xbox one x they will work and you'll have some options to switch between them in the settings otherwise the system does actually do some low level updates so backcat games will benefit from faster load times stronger fidelity better performance uh, auto hdr but that's on a system level that just you know spruces everything up Mm -hmm. if you have a tv that supports it but there aren't you know you can't just jump into i don't know gta 5 and just be like oh i want to turn the frame rate up to it doesn't work like that sadly it'd be great if it did but next question does save data on a current gen game work on the Series X? Yes. So you just transfer it straight over. Yeah, it's all in the cloud. Perfect. So, you know, like that basically. I was playing, uh, I was playing uh, Alan Wake uh, last week, and I booted it up, booted it up, and it's got my save data from you know two thousand and nine or eight. Or, no, not two thousand nine because it didn't come out then. Two thousand ten. It's got my save data from the three hundred and sixty. Sat there from the last time I played it on Xbox One through Backcat, just waiting. So all your save data is there, it just moves across, super easy, like, it's amazing actually just being able to load up a game confident that where you left off however many years ago is still there. Uh, Finally, in the features section, how do the load times for Xbox One games compare to optimised for Xbox Series X games? Okay, so backwards compatible Xbox One games are super fast. Obviously, it depends on what game. You see something like a Red Dead 2 maybe takes 50 seconds versus two minutes it would have taken originally um so you know you're getting you know 70 to 80 percent faster load times on a lot of xbox one games xbox series x games i've only been able to try a couple so far stuff like dirt 5 yakuza 7 like a dragon they're very fast but they're not invisible so there are still load times but they are you know they are pretty fast i'd say 30 to 40 seconds but again it is completely dependent on the game and what developers you know they still want to show all their bloody company logos and <laughs> intro movies at the start of it so that you got but that's 30 to 40 seconds to get you into the game once you're actually in the game the load times from like oh know. yeah they're fast yeah, yeah yeah super fast it's everything gets a net benefit because of the cpu gpu and ssd it just it improves load times across the board it's actually really if you look at something like a destiny 2 where actually even just going into the menu to like mess around with your guardian that used to have like a couple of seconds of lag before the character would load up that's actually pretty much gone now so you know it's barely noticeable but it's it's a nice that you can just immediately do stuff without having to wait 
for the old hardware to just catch up with what developers want to do. Right then, moving on to the general graphics of the thing. Do I need a 4K TV to enjoy the Series X? I mean, I'd like to say no, but the reality is probably. Like, one of the weird things about this generation is that it's kind of the evolutions on the margins. Like, it's really difficult to appreciate, like, some of the features of the system if you're not on a 4K TV. So if you look at something like the Batcat games, the vast majority of them benefit from something called Auto HDR, which if you have an HDR-enabled television, it will an algorithm will basically apply HDR features, so, like, you know, lighting that emphasizes certain elements like the sun or explosions it will just sort of trace those onto old games which is really nice like it means you can go back and play you know games from the xbox one that didn't ever were never built for hdr and it they just immediately take advantage of it now that isn't to say you have a miserable time if you have a standard definition tv you know you still benefit from faster loading and all of that sort of stuff but at least right now it i mean it looks in, like uh, like unbelievably beautiful on a 4k tv and if you're not seeing that net benefit it's kind of you know it just it's wasted like basically so you should if you're buying a series x obviously costs 450 quid 500 dollars you should probably have a 4k set in mind at some point in the future is hdr supported outside of 4k so eg at, at 440p and 1080p does, does it still run HDR features? I'm assuming it does. Yeah, as long as you've got an HDR-enabled television, yeah. it will apply the auto HDR filter to my to my knowledge. Right. Um, does the Xbox Series X support ultra-wide monitors? Not natively, no. So if you're using an ultra-wide monitor, expect your image to be stretched out a little bit and to my understanding there's nothing you can really do about that except it just like auto stretches it yeah just it doesn't it doesn't support it that isn't to say given that the xbox ecosystem is tied now so directly between xbox one xbox series x and pc it wouldn't surprise me that microsoft put something in there to support ultra wide in the future but at launch unless that's something that's coming between now and november 10th that's not something that i've can see in the menus right now yeah i mean it's worth noting this is obviously a, a pre-launch machine yep. running on pre-launch software uh there's no reason that it wouldn't be like a day one patch and those kind of features are added or they're added at some time yeah we probably should have mentioned that earlier but i'm mentioning it now oh, about, okay well, about however go. far we th through the video we are wow. i'm just gonna throw that out there there we go are the field of view sliders for games on the xbox series x i guess not by default not by default that is completely dependent on what a developer puts into it so black ops cold war new call of duty treyarch has already confirmed that they are putting fov sliders in the game which is a first for the series on console so it's not out of the realms of possibility to expect other developers to make use of that if they feel it's necessary and finally in this section what's the most visually impressive game you've tried so far so i guess which games have you tried on Series X, I guess, both backwards compatibility and the new ones that are coming out, and which one is the best? Well, You can only pick one. Oh, you can't pick a Remedy game. Well, then I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, truthfully, so at, at this stage of the preview program, um, I've only had a chance to try Dirt 5 and Yakuza Like a Dragon, which are launch games for the Series X. Um, you know, early code. Both of those look unbelievable dirt in particular um i'm playing on a samsung q85 which is one of their 2020 4k tvs and it, it looks absolutely unreal but i actually think some of the most visually impressive stuff i've seen were xbox one games that received xbox one x 4k patches so stuff like quantum break i know you said no remedy but here quantum break here we go looks stunning <laughs> Like, genuinely stunning, uh, as does Rise of the Tomb Raider. Like, that game looks like it could have come out last week. And also, even though it hasn't, it never received any specific 4K updates, Sunset Overdrive 
still looks unbelievable like with especially with h auto hdr like it's so colorful it looks amazing like it runs so smoothly now and it's just you know it's still one of the best xbox one exclusives and it's available through game pass so there you go day one play some xbox one x games honestly that i've had so much fun going back through my back catalog it's it's great Okay, moving on to what happens on day one when you get your console out of the box. So, how many updates were there when you first turned it on? Do you know what? Update-wise, it wasn't too bad. Obviously, I've got pre, pre-launch pre OS on this, so there's going to be another patch at some point between now and launch. But, on the whole, the machine set up relatively quickly, and I don't know if you've got anything in those questions about the app, but there is an app that lets you sort of mess around with the settings and stuff like that while it's installing the first patch so update wise relatively quick i'm assuming there's some questions in there about installs and downloads because that uh i don't think there are yet all right well i'm going to jump potentially ahead updates are quick but it is going to take bloody forever to install everything like if you're moving your entire xbox legacy with this xbox 360 xbox one original xbox games you got to re-download all of those. Just takes, especially if your internet sucks, like it does for everyone in the UK. Like it's just, okay. it's just gonna take forever. So don't. I mean, it took me 12, 14 hours before I played my first game on this thing. Ooh. So I guess, I guess to put that in context, though, which from I, from plugging it in to getting to the menu, saying you're not downloading anything, like how long does that oh, setup process take? Thirty minutes, I'd say, right. if that. Um, on that note, for me waiting so long to play anything, that is partially my fault for downloading Call of Duty Warzone as the first thing. Yeah, that is so, entirely your fault. Uh, 100 gigs. On many levels. Yeah, it was about 10 hours in that I decided that I wanted to play something, so I paused that and then started downloading Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which only took a little bit of time, and then I played that while Warzone continued to download and ruin my life because it's so big. Fine. Uh, well, you know when I said there weren't any questions about uh, installing? Well, should parents plan to install or update yes. prior to opening it on Oh, God, Christmas Day? honestly. Like, I guess it was the 360 era that ushered this in of just, you know, constant updates of you not being able to play anything on day one. But the Series X is bound by the same... You know, whatever your download speed is will dictate how quickly you get to play anything the updates aren't the problem it's just game installs you know if you want to like fortnite's only like 20 gig for example like that will download relatively quickly and you can get straight online and start playing it but you know if you want to play anything more <sighs> ssd intensive in terms of pure size you know you want to download those way before it's opened up on birthday or christmas day or whatever it is because i mean as said, my internet's relatively decent, but it still just took forever. Fine. Okay. Christmas Day, presents, that kind of thing. Make sure that you get it out of the box a day before. Do all the updates. Plus, you can use that as an opportunity to set up some parental controls. So, uh, and we are we going to mention how long it took you to get this back in the box? Uh, you. It took you to get it back You'll in the box. You'll notice that this isn't ever going back in the box because Josh cannot work out how you get it back the in box the box. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> You'll know this when you open yours up. You open it up, it's not designed to go back in. It's too powerful to be contained in a box. Your first game is trying to put it back in the box and, and closing it back up again. Unbelievable. Um, okay, next question. How easy was it to set up? Oh, super easy. Just plug it in. Um, sign in with your Xbox Live account if you've got one. Um, you've, there's also an app that you can download that you can sign into as well. It will recognize your settings from previous consoles, which is great. And you basically just mess around on the app and go, yes, I want these settings. Click, done, downloads it all. I turned it on, you know, all of my settings, like minutia settings from the Xbox One were in there ready to go so was my profile and my themes and all of that stuff so it just sets up it's super easy to set up one thing we haven't mentioned i have to put this down for this though is like when you get it out of the box as opposed to like all the other consoles we've ever had there's basically like two leads right you get yeah you get your power lead which just goes in the back here 
and then you have your uh, HDMI lead, and that is it. Yep, that's like, it. There's no power brick. Nope. It's just, I mean, I will say this cable is not very long. No, it's that's like, a very short cable. It's about, In fact, is this the one that came with it? Yeah. It's about a meter. And you balancing it like that is giving me some real bad heart palpitations. So <laughs> if you could get it away from the edge of that table, that'd be great. Um, Something I also want to point out for accessibility, these are bumped. So you can work out which slots are which. Uh, it's also for, you know, it helps for people who are blind and partially sighted but it also helps if you're trying to reach around the back of your cabinet so you can work out like where the hdmi slot is and where the ssd slots are and the ethernet and all that handy good work microsoft yes also worth pointing out while we're here because it wasn't asked during the hardware section but they've taken the hdmi in port out that was on the xbox one that allowed you to run like your TV, yeah. DVR. It's not a it. throughput anymore. No, that's gone. So it is real easy on the back. It's just two USB storage card port and then your HDMI port and an Ethernet port. Super easy. All right. Look how fingerprinty you've made it. It's ah. all clean. That's another thing. Does it like... Go, Don't look. do that. Honestly, I took just Beautiful. as a side note, I took this to our photography studio to get photographs. So we get some nice photos. It took them 40 minutes to clean the fingerprints off. And then they had to wear cotton gloves all day with it. And I can already, you've ruined this. That, all their hard work, ruined. How seamless is it to use existing perhapsals like Xbox One X controllers? Oh, so yeah, all of your, all of your peripherals from previous consoles move from Xbox One should work on this. The only, like literally just as easy as you would for, for a regular Xbox One. So there's a little button here that syncs the controller up so it syncs exactly the same way the only thing that might not work is third party battery packs for the controller because they've ever so slightly re-angled the back so i mean it's you know you couldn't it's imperceptible but the the compartment is a little bit re-angled so third party battery packs might not work to my testing everything i own Xbox One wise has so far functioned just fine. So. Okay. Moving on to dashboardy type stuff. What do dynamic themes look like? Uh, they look like regular themes that are slightly more dynamic. Wow. Okay. Uh, which way do the discs go in? I'm just going to, like, that's, I'm not even going to give you it's the opportunity just, to. They move a bit. Uh, yeah, of course. They're pretty. Fine. And finally, in this section, for day one, the big question everyone wants to know on day one which way do the discs go in? the disc and i'm gonna say this only because i learned the hard way uh because the first thing i did was load a disc in wrong and it made a very well a horrible noise discs if it's if it's standing up discs well surely it's the same way if it's standing up or it's on its side i can't even remember this the game art needs to face that way okay so the the game art always on the thin edge yeah there you go and if you do it the other way it's upset like really <laughs> really upset and then the disc doesn't want to eject and then you have small heart palpitations that you've broken the xbox series x within 12 hours of owning it so i would not be surprised uh, and this this out. is your eject button is yep. it yeah okay. just checking yep Fine. all right moving on to the xbox series x xbox live right can you have cross-gen parties through xbox live on series x yes the Xbox Series X is basically like another Xbox. It's, it's part of the Xbox One family, so there's no distinction that I've seen between anything. So you can still chat to friends on Xbox One. It's absolutely fine. It okay. works exactly the same. Related, can Xbox Series X owners send text and voice messages to PC and Xbox One players? Definitely Xbox One players. Uh, PC I haven't tested, but in theory, yes, as long as they are going through the Xbox you know, live service, yeah. it should be absolutely fine. As long as you're in the ecosystem, yeah. you'll be good. Uh, how easy is it to access your cloud saves? Super easy. I think we spoke about that a little earlier, but cloud saves, you just turn the game on. If you have a save there, it will find it. If it doesn't, something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> or you imagine that you played it, which has happened to me in the past. So it's not out of the realms of possibility. Can you choose which parts of the game to download slash install? Yes, on a case-by-case -case basis. So, for example, something like Call of Duty Warzone or Modern Warfare, you can actually decide 
to uninstall the campaign packs, spec ops, and the multiplayer and just leave segments or just multiplayer and take everything else away and then you can only access those parts of the game. So if you wanted to, you can take Call of Duty down from 140 gigs to a lean 80. Oh, so yeah, what it's, a treat. it's game by game, but what a next gen treat. as a as an option, it's fantastic. So I really hope more developers put that in place because it's just you know, it's exactly what you want. Can you stack downloads? So can you download more than one game slash patch at once? No. So you can stack them in a queue like you could on Xbox One, but sadly you can only download one thing at a time and you can only patch one thing at a time. And if you want to move anything over to storage or from storage, it will interrupt that. So it's kind of frustrating, like given that it's a new generation, it's 2020, it'd be nice if it just did multiple things at once yeah. but then again given how slow internet speeds are across large parts of the west it probably would not work all right so. how does the capture button work on the controller so yeah the capture buttons brand new feature for the series x controller it's just just this little button there it's really easy to reach from both thumbsticks and the d-pad basically as easy as clicking it like a ps4 click it takes a screenshot and then immediately sends it to the app on the phone. So upload studio, OneDrive, messing around with all of that stuff is gone. It's just immediately saved to the cloud. And I mean immediately, like I've not noticed any lag in it. And I've been taking a lot of quantum break screenshots, but it's so nice being able to just click a button instead of having to go into the guide and press Y. And I know that sounds like such a small petty thing to, be happy about but it just it makes a world of difference and the next question is once you've done that how easy is it to find my shared screenshots and videos oh super easy as i said it's just straight on the app you basically click a little button in the top and then it says captures Can you see that okay click captures and if the wi-fi is going to work everything is there from there you have the option of just immediately sharing it to facebook twitter all your socials uh you can caption them and and do all of that sort of stuff so it's really really easy um it's good to see that after really not investing in capture and upload throughout the entire last generation they've actually put microsoft's put significant effort into doing it right does the xbox series x capture 4k video and screenshots yes and is that an option or is it just default 4k or can you choose like you know, 1080 4k that i have not that I, I think it's default based on your TV settings. So if you're playing at 1080p in a, on, on a 1080p TV, it will capture screenshots and video at the maximum resolution. Everything that I've captured has been on a 4K TV, has been captured at 4K. So, yeah. Okay, our final set of questions is entitled, There's No Such Thing as a Stupid Question. So prepare yourself. <laughs> Debatable, but sure. Are there any secrets inside the case, like, you know, Master Chief, like there was in the previous Xboxes? That's a very good question. Microsoft says... Let's open it up and see! Yeah, Microsoft says there is. Uh, JJ, did you bring the hammer? There's some pliers behind you. Let's tear this thing open. If I just push it off the edge again, yeah. we could find out. 100%. All right, so at the moment, not sure, maybe. There's, Microsoft said there's a little Master Chief hiding inside, um, but apart from that, no. I mean, there is some like green paint on the top of it that sort of radiates when you get close to it. But yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I mean, this will stress Josh out again. Well, it's turned on. Don't, I, don't move it when it's this, on. You might be able to see the green phasing in and out. It's not a light. It's like sort of paint. Yeah. Uh, it's so, you can't you can't notice it from a distance, but if you walk up to it, it just it has like a nice pulse. It almost you know has a radi it radiates as you walk near it. So yeah. Uh, the next question will be when it's on, can you rock it backwards and forwards and I've, not break it? So no, let's uh, you're, we'll find honestly, out. Honestly, uh, you're upsetting me <laughs> a lot. <laughs> is there any difference in fan sounds if it's vertical or horizontal? I will say this is on. It's been on throughout this whole video. I haven't heard it at all. Look, like. Silence. 
it is silent. It's a very quiet machine. Um, it is, I think, designed to stand up, but you can lie it down. The fan noise is exactly the same. It is pretty damn quiet all of the time. The only time it made any noise is when I was installing a disc because the disc drive needs to turn on. But aside from that, it's been super quiet. Are there any lights on the Xbox once it's powered on? Uh, there's that light. I'm surprised it's still on after you've been moving it around so much. But uh, yeah, that's the only light. Obviously, that's not a light. That's paint. We just covered that. So yeah, one light. Can you use the Xbox One power cord with the Xbox Series X? Yes, you can use the Xbox One X power cord. And you could also use a PS4 power cord. It's a, like a, if you're in the UK, it won't make any difference because that's the other end of the plug. It's like a... It's a kettle lead. Yeah, well, it's like a figure of eight plug. Yeah. Uh, Shall I stress Josh out and pull no, it out? No, don't pull it out. Just, just leave <laughs> so it. Just put it out show everyone? No. I'll show you later. Uh, yeah, it's a normal figure of eight power cord. So if you've got one for another machine, it's fine. Does it have a power brick? No. Already covered it. Are the rubber feet really noticeable when the console stands vertically? No. Have you noticed them? Because it's they're there. Vertically. There's four there. You can kind of see them, but I twist, it. I twist it for them. Oh! Stop twisting. They're so fingerprinty. Yeah, so many fingerprints. You can't notice them. I mean, they're there, obviously, so you do see them, but it's you know, it's a huge monolith. That's the least of our problems. Well, the stuff. next one is: Does it look weird lying on its side? Yes. Let's see. No, don't turn it on its side. Not when it's turned on. Let's see. There you go. Does it look weird? Yes. It's still on. It looks weird. I will say... It's because you can't take this off, isn't it? You can't take the stand off. Um, I would not advise brute forcing it. Or brute forcing this off? Yeah. <laughs> no. Because it's, it's basically... It, it, you'll expose the insides. And the other reason why I wouldn't lie it down is just... The fan, the air in, comes in from the back and goes up through it and out through the top vents. So I, th I, would, I would wonder whether lying it down would would cause any issues in the long term but obviously that's pure speculation on my part how hot does it get not not very i mean it's we've been sitting here we've been sitting here for ages and ages for and this video and it's not hot it's like not it's, hot it's, it's actually got a cooling breeze does it yeah ah, well yeah, i will out. say if you if you leave it on so it has instant on like the xbox one so you can leave it you know it powers down to like a low power state and then lets you continue running updates and downloads in the background. If you come into in the morning, like you know, f well, four to six hours later is how much sleep I get. But four to six hours later, like it's a little hot, but not really. Like even I played, you know, bloody eight hours of Quantum Break in one sitting yesterday, and it was as it, as cool as it is now. So okay, yeah, uh, we've covered this really. But how loud is it at the moment? No. Whisper quiet. Whisper quiet. Playing games whisper quiet like Still i haven't heard it like there's a chance that maybe more demanding stuff i haven't played gears 5 or forza horizon 4 optimized yet there's a chance that more demanding games might make it a little louder but the only thing that's made it loud thus far is installing a disc for obvious reasons how do you turn it off what can you just hold the power button in do you have to do it through a menu it doesn't require coddling you'll like see, a playstation you'll see 4. why i asked that question next doesn't require coddling like a PlayStation 4. You just turn it off. You can also turn the controller off if you really wanted to. Is that the only... Can you hold that button in to do anything else, like put it in its low power state, or is it just no, on off? It's now in a low power state. Right. That's the, so it's constantly... And you can obviously turn it on with the controller. Right. Uh, and the final question in our Xbox questions list, how does it taste? Tastes like power. Well, how does it actually taste? I'm not so tasting that. Do I lick it? No, don't I lick it. it? Oh, JJ... I'll lick it in a minute. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you, Josh, for taking us through all of those questions. I think there was about 50 or so. If you've got any more, put them in the comments below and we'll try and ask, answer them either in another video or just via the comment system. Stay tuned to Games Radar for lots more Xbox Series X stuff in the future. We're going to have hands-on with all of the launch games. We'll have a bit more on the console itself. Uh, so there's loads more to come. So stay tuned and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys.